Welcome to Hard Boiled Synthesis. I got a special one for you guys. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the origin of the claim that catnip is 10 times more effective than DEET as a repellent to mosquitoes. This is something I should have done earlier, investigate more deeply on where this claim came from. If you remember, I did a uh, Twitter search. This is really where the origin was, where there was this tweet that kept uh, coming out and so, like, there was one this morning. Catnip can deter mosquitoes. The more you know kind of a thing where catnip is 10 times more effective than repelling mosquitoes. Like, every day, someone tweets about this claim. And so I think I stumbled upon the origin of it. Um, I was hoping it was going to be like a publication, but it kind of has a weirder story. It's totally remarkable. Um collection of cosmic convergences allowed me to kind of uh, investigate, sniff through where, what's the origin of this claim. And uh, what I should have done from the start, which I don't know why I didn't do, and this is where I feel like I'm, I'm being like uh, very investigative, I'm connecting the dots, is, you know, the start of any good investigation is Google. You just got to do the Google search first. And <laughs> and during the scoping phase, I don't know why I didn't think of it. I should have just did a Google search. It's kind of silly. And if you do a Google search right there, it just appears. The story's actually a bit more nuanced. So follow, follow me through this journey in how I uh, pieced together, connected the dots in... Oh, whether or not catnip is 10 times more effective at repellent. How many times am I going to say that phrase? In any case, uh, my my one claim to fame, uh, teaching medical entomology years, years, years ago, I think it was probably eight years ago, one of the students during the class said, I look like this guy. And both physically and the way I behave in terms of classroom performance. Boy, do I miss kind of jumping around in front of a class. All this online stuff is neat, but I can't wait to just like interact with students again. All right, back to the uh, claim, origin of the claim. Let's do a Google search. And I mean, uh, the Google search is fairly straightforward. Uh, you type in catnip repels, catnip mosquito 10. First thing that comes up is a press release. Almost 20, excuse me, almost 20 years ago. Catnip repels mosquitoes more effectively than DEET. Science Daily. And if you uh, click on this, it's amazing. It's 20 years ago. Um, it basically outlines this finding, the claim that it was 10 times more repellent. Now there's more to it than this. Uh, for example, uh, researchers report that nepetalactone, the essential oil of catnip that gives the plants its characteristic odor, is about 10 times more effective at repelling DEET. Okay, the findings was reported today at the 222nd National Meeting of the American Chemical Society. Okay, so like the origin of this did not come from a formal publication in a journal, which sometimes press releases are, are derived from. This comes from a press release of a conference talk where um, Chris Peterson and Joel Coates uh, discussed their findings on catnip. Now, Joel Coates, he's a famous entomologist, a famous um, chemical repellent entomologist. And so I was really happy to see his name associated with um, this research because to me that add some credence and add some validity to the claim because he's, I mean, he is uh, a top repellent researcher. Um, and so this is where it starts. So here's the where the weird story starts. So the press release was based on a conference talk. And so this kind of made me think, okay, well, maybe downstream they actually uh, published the findings in a journal. But I didn't, I didn't find no papers from Peterson and Coates in my screening uh, from Web of Science. The only one I found was something that I excluded, which was a study on cockroaches, on um, repellency effects of catnip on cockroaches, which I dumped because it's not about mosquitoes. 
And so if you do a search for Peterson and Coates, uh, what you find is, let me bring it up here. You find a patent. And the patent was actually included in my original search and I had decided it was relevant to the research project. I just haven't gotten to the point where I'm extracting data from the, from, from this study in particular. And so, uh, this is totally fascinating to me. This is a very alternative research route in which researchers decided not to formally publish their findings, but to instead fold it into a patent. And if you go into this patent, it's huge. It's like 35 pages long. The one I'm showing you now is the one that was last filed, that last came out in 2011. It seems like the patent has since expired, but it has been updated. I mean, it's been 20 years. It's been updated many times. And the one I found in my original search was dates back to um, 2003. And so here's what I think the story is. Um, while they presented their findings at the conference, the chemical uh, conference, they had a patent pending. It was being in, it was in the books almost. It got released a few years later. They got some nice press, um, attention after their talk, uh, but they never followed through with an actual publication of the repellency effects on mosquitoes because it was all put in the patent. Now here's the, here, here it gets a little complicated. In a 2003 version, um, which was submitted in uh, 1999 or 2000, these things take a while to process, there was actually no uh, mosquito repellent outcomes reported. A lot of talk about cockroaches, and then there's a little bit of discussion of experimental designs with mosquitoes. And so, um, if I would have used this patent, which I originally discovered through my screening process, I would have excluded it during the extraction phase because it didn't report any mosquito repellent outcomes. However, the latest version in 2011 does report mosquito outcomes. I have no clue why this one did not appear in my search for, um, mosquitoes in web of science. The 2003 one appeared. But this 2011 version, which actually has data, um, if I jump to page, I think, uh, let me check, page 30. Um, it actually reports in table 17, percentage uh, repellency of Culex mosquitoes with um, catnip. The other one that they looked at was this uh, orange oil, Assange oil, I guess that's what you would say. And so these are data that I could include um, in the meta-analysis. This is a totally first for me. I've never included research outcomes reported in a patent into a meta-analysis. Typically the sources of data are um, an actual primary research published research article from a journal, sometimes from a dissertation, but this time I get to include a patent which I think is totally, totally cool. And um, continuing my search with this, then I was, I wondered like, okay, this study may have, must have originated somewhere. And with uh, really a superficial search, you know, I found a thesis, which was uh, Chris Peterson's thesis, who's part of the patent, who's also gets credit for the uh, seminar at the conference, the chemical conference. And if you look into this thesis, most of it's about repellency effects on cockroaches, but there's one chapter there on mosquitoes. And so hopefully I could also include this dissertation in the meta-analysis. Um, maybe there's some duplication in results there. I haven't quite mined the data out of it. Maybe the results reported in the patent are the same as those reported in the dissertation, but they are kind of like almost, you know, 10 years, 15 years apart. There may have been different experiments going on. Nonetheless, it seems like I figured out the source of the claim of 10 times mosquitoes being more effective uh, uh, can it be more effective than uh, DEET? Okay, I managed to connect the dots 
Uh, but there's more to it. There's more to it than the study. Um, I'm not also not the first to be skeptical about the claim. Um, and in the original Google search, if you look, let's get out of this page here. If you look, there's a, an entire website on skeptics.stackexchange.com that asked the exact same question. They came out in 2016. And basically they asked, is catnip 10 times more effective than DEET? And they're like, I'm calling BS on this. This is super weird. And the source of the anxiety is the difficulty in finding the original study reporting that specific outcome. And you and I know already that it was never reported in a formal publication. It's found in a patent, right? There's no way you would ever know to search patents for the outcome of the experiment. And in fact, uh, there is one a note on the discussion saying criticisms of the entomological accuracy of the 2001 findings are presented here. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. There's another publication out there that kind of criticizes the, the study outcomes. Let me link, let me click on this and see what they read. And if you click on it, it's a broken link. I mean, this thing was in 2004. I'm not surprised. Like, why would uh, why would a university conserve a link on their website? And this was at the University of Ottawa, and I was at um, I was in Ottawa between oh man, 2002 2003. I was in Ottawa doing my masters, and so I I want to click on this link. I want to read the paper, but it's a uh, it comes up as a dead end. It, the link is totally broken, right? And so what do you do when the link is broken? You go to Wayback Machine, the website archive, and you could and you plug in the HTML link that's broken in this and cross your fingers and you hope that they archived the document. And guess what? They did. Back in 2014 and 2018, you could click on this. What comes up is a PDF of someone criticizing the original claim that catnip is 10 times more effective than deep. Now the claim, the, well, their criticism is not centered on, on uh, the quality of the study outcome. In fact, they say a challenge with assessing the quality of the study outcome is that nothing was ever published, right? That it, they weren't able to verify the outcome, the quality of the experiment, because they were never able to find the, the published study. Again, that's because it was folded into a um, patent. And so much of the, this discussion from Professor Hausman at the University of Ottawa is him discussing that he read a press release from the CBC describing that catnip was 10 times more effective than repellent, but being totally unsatisfied by what they reference, what they cite, um, given that none of the citations were the link to the study. And that's because they linked towards the original press release um, that was released the day in which the uh, researchers talked about their findings at a conference, right? So it, it goes to a dead end because there was um, no publication with the original finding. It all stemmed from this press release at the conference. And so it was cool to see that there's like oh, other people that were skeptic of the original finding and talked about their frustrations in terms of not being able to identify, isolate the study outcome um, because the study outcome was folded into a patent, which is totally a non-traditional route of describing research outcomes. I mean, is that cool? 
it what what a what a weird story associated with um catnip and repellency just the just the echoes of that original press release almost 20 years ago still reverberate in social media right almost daily this tweet gets thrown out saying catnip is 10 times more effective than DEET. And it all comes back to that original press release from a conference talk, not even an original publication. Now, through a little bit of a goofy investigation, I was able to pinpoint it to a patent. And so there's a bunch of firsts for me here. First, I'm, I get to include patent outcomes in a meta-analysis. And two, all this social media stuff is super cool to try to investigate. This kind of resonates with the name of the course, hard boiled synthesis, right? You know, to me, I originally hard boiled meant like practical, but you hard boiled, you could use it for like investigative skepticism, um, like a, like a hard boiled detective, right? Like a weathered skeptic trying to figure something out. I was that today. I was that hard boiled detective today. And I think I kind of figured it all out. And so I got a nice thesis that I could potentially extract data from a patent to extract data from. Um, and so uh, I still have to extract actual many, many outcomes from other studies. And so I'm going to end it with that today. Um, this is, this has been quite the exciting adventure to kind of learn more about catnip. And repellents, I certainly never thought that it would be a uh, goofy, goofy story like this. All right. Okay. So I'm going to take a break. I'll, uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.